Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we are as our today's topic is fetal circulation. When blood enters the uh, fetal circulation, it comes from uh, placenta. Uh, part of uh, placenta is a part of maternal circulation. Here you can see this. This part is placenta. It is part of maternal circulation, and uh, this red. Uh, this red uh, structure which is going uh, which is draining blood towards the uh, fetus uh, is called umbilical vein it is single and uh, it is uh, um, it is uh, supplying oxygenated blood to the fetal circulation and these two structures which uh, you can see are in blue color they both are umbilical arteries and they are draining uh, deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the maternal circulation i.e. placenta or uh, this you can see is a is a liver and uh, umbilical vein is divided into two parts one part is going to a little bit of the blood is going to the liver because we cannot uh, we do not want it to die and the rest of the blood uh, is uh, shunted towards the right atrium uh, why is this all blood shunted towards the right atrium uh, because uh, uh, this is oxygenated blood and the fetus all of its, its cells are uh, dependent on this oxygenated blood uh, and the liver in adults liver is uh, liver is supplied by this all blood uh, it uh, it is uh, supplied to all these sinusoids sinusoids are uh, the spaces uh, potential spaces between the cells they do not have the tunica media uh, uh, tunica adventitia intima and other layers of the uh, veins that is to say they are not uh, the elastic structures and they cannot contain the blood they cannot maintain the pressure of the blood they cannot maintain the flow of the blood so we cannot uh, give all this blood to the liver and then collect it uh, from the other way uh, around and uh, give it to the heart because it will take too much time and uh, the fetus will be devoid of the oxygenated blood so when uh, this uh, this is the first shunt first shunt you can sh see here this is called ductus venosus this word ductus venosus this this conduit is called ductus venosus it is the first shunt in the meta in the fetal circulation uh, it is uh, uh, mother nature has given us this structure to bypass uh, the uh, sinusoidal spaces of the liver uh, all the blood is shunted towards the right atrium mm, because in fetus uh, the lungs are filled with the with the fluid with the amniotic fluid and uh, the, the, it is a very high pressure circulation so all uh, the blood which is which comes to the right atrium uh, a very very uh, little amount of that blood can go into the right uh, circulation and the rest of the blood is shunted from the right atrium to the left atrium and then it goes to the aorta aorta and uh, a very little amount of the blood that very little amount of the blood that is that is uh, passing from the pulmonary arteries is also shunted back to the left circulation and goes into the aorta and you can see here that the, that the when uh, where there is a connection between aorta and the pulmonary arteries the uh, color of the blood changes abruptly here because uh, this is a uh, deoxygenated blood and it when it gets mixed with the 80% uh, of saturation 80% saturated blood because this this uh, umbilical vein from the maternal circulation is only draining 80% of the saturation and partial pressure of oxygen here is 30 meter, millimeter mercury and this deoxygenated vein uh, uh, this oxygen deoxygenated blood from the arteries umbilical arteries uh, this uh, is even uh, more desaturated that is to say the, this is even more um, this has less uh, partial pressure of oxygen as well as its saturation so we have come to the conclusion that there is this uh, one shunt for the to bypass the sinusoidal uh, spaces of the liver and there is the, this uh, this second shunt which is from right atrium to the left atrium uh, this uh, this little structure this aperture is uh, from uh, uh, in the actually this upper and this lower end this is called the septum primum and this conduit this uh, uh, perforation between the the two is called the foramen primum 
and this septum which is uh, uh, acting like an aperture between these two is called the septum secundum this septum secundum actually uh, uh, behaves like a valve mechanism so when the blood is uh, shunted from the right atrium to the left atrium this uh, aperture uh, 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 is uh, popped away uh, and uh, out of the uh, septum primum and blood leaks into the left atrium so in this way this uh, uni unilateral valve is maintained from right heart to the left heart in fetus circulation and uh, when the fetus is born uh, it takes a deep breath and uh, all the amniotic fluid from the lungs is uh, expelled away and after its, its expulsion uh, it becomes a very low pressure uh, circulation um, uh, that is to say 25 by 8 uh, millimeter mercury pressure it works on uh, 25 systolic and 8 diastolic blood pressure so uh, the left side of the heart works on 120 by 80 uh, systolic diastolic blood pressure so 120 is way more than 25 and that is why this uh, right side uh, left side of the heart becomes more uh, pressurized circulation and uh, this uh, uh, septum secundum collapses and uh, collapses and gets attached to the septum primum and uh, permanently fuses to this septum and uh, gets fibrosis there so there is a window uh, initially there was a window when this window gets closed the uh, there there remain remains only a fossa fossa is to say that uh, it is just a uh, just a symbol of uh, the initial conduit which was present between the right atrium and left atrium now there is only a sign of it and that is called that is called that is not called foramen ovale initially it was called foramen ovale now it is called fossa ovalis okay uh, after the baby is born uh, and uh, there is a the third shunt which is uh, between the the aorta and pulmonary arteries this uh, this aorta and pulmonary artery they they are actually mixing right heart uh, right uh, circulations blood to the uh, aorta and uh, this remains patent uh, throughout the uh, entire uterine life of the fetus and when the fetus is born prostaglandins inside of it um, prostaglandins uh, E1 and E2 they becomes uh, they become decreased in amount and uh, they, they deteriorate and uh, the that is the way uh, this uh, foramen this uh, ductus arteriosus this obliterates okay now the next thing is uh, there are uh, there are a few anomalies in the heart uh, in which uh, the, the name, name of that anomaly is transposition of great vessels so these both are pulmonary artery and the aorta they both are called great vessels uh, uh, some of the times that um, some of the times the spiraling of uh, uh, the septum between these two conduits uh, is not uh, proper and uh, in that manner this aorta that's connected to the right heart and this pulmonary artery gets connected to the left heart so both the circuits uh, of right and left heart they become uh, independently isolated so these uh, both isolated circuits they cannot mix the blood and oxygenated uh, blood uh, remains uh, inside the oxygenated chambers and the deoxygenated blood remains inside the deoxygenated chambers and in this manner we need a we need actually uh, ventricular septal defect or for a patent for a of valley or patent ductal triotis to for the viability of the fetus uh, until or unless we uh, get the patient to the uh, to the operation theater and uh, correct the anomalies of uh, transposition okay so in the, in those patients we we need these uh, shunts uh, post natally as well but uh, in most of the times we do not need these shunts and uh, they have to be obliterated normally and uh, they have to go away so first shunt is ductus arteriosus uh, ductus venosus inside the liver they, it, it uh, uh, postnatally becomes fibrosed and is called ductus uh, uh, ligamentum venosum and uh, this uh, uh, foramen of valley postnatally is called fossa ovalis and this deoxygenated blood from the spirit vena cava passes through the right atrium to the right ventricle and main, main pulmonary artery and that to the ductus arteries as I told you already so this uh, becomes obliterated um, later on 
and uh, if it is not uh, obliterated this is called patent ductus arteriosus or pda that uh, looks like that that feels like a machinery machine murmur uh, continuous murmur throughout the s1 and s2 so that is called machinery murmur at birth patient takes a deep breath and uh, oxygen saturation uh, increases and prostaglandin decrease and uh, the, the ductus arteriosus it obliterates but uh, in cases where they, this does not obliterate, we have to give the endomethacin. Endomethacin is a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug that uh, works uh, and inhibits on, on the cyclooxygenase pathway. Cyclooxygenase is, is an enzyme that uh, converts 20 carbon chain uh, fatty acids to the thromboxanes, prostaglandins, uh, and uh, prostacyclins. So, uh, endomethacin when inhibits uh, th this pathway, prostaglandin E1 and E2 they are uh, toned down, and their toning down helps to help us to maintain the uh, toning down helps us to obliterate the ductus arteriosus. So I have already told you about a few of things. Uh, like ductus arteriosus becomes a ligamentum arteriosum, ductus venosum becomes ligamentum venosum, foramen veli becomes fossa velis postnatally, notochords becomes a notochord is a, uh, is a framework in epidermis uh, uh, when the embryo is a uh, three layered, it epidermal layer, uh, epidermal layer uh, gets a uh, 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 ridge in the dorsal uh, surface and that uh, that actually divides the uh, surface ectoderm into neuroectoderm and surface ectoderm uh, th that ectoderm when divided into surface and neuroectoderm uh, that give neuroectoderm gives rise to the neuroclast cells and the neural tube and around uh, around that uh, basic uh, blue uh, print of the notochord and this notochord later on uh, develops into the nucleus pulposus this is written here and this we, we will talk about uh, this uh, in, a, in a complete different lecture uh, uh, in great detail okay umbilical arteries these actually the allantois is a remnant of the communication of uh, of uh, bladder with the umbilicus this uh, becomes uh, later on becomes uracus and postnatally it becomes median with an n umbilical ligament median umbilical ligament in the center around that two ligaments uh, of umbilical arteries they arrange themselves around it but they are called medial umbilical ligaments they are lateral to the median but are most medial to all other structures umbilical vein ligamentum teres umbilical vein this 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 the red structure this uh, obliterates and um, gets fibrosed and is called ligamentum teres and this is enclosed within the falciform ligament of the liver that's con that concludes our session with the fetal circulation thank you so much